Today I'm going to discuss about chapter 5 in the economic evolution which is titled about the age of the economic reform. Chapter outline. During this chapter we will discuss five main points during this chapter. First point, why did the Egypt need an economic reform program? The second point about the objective with that problem which is called ERSAP, abbreviation of economic reform and structural adjustment problem. The third point about the elements of the Egypt's economic reform program. The fourth point, to what extent that program was successful in solving some of the economic problems faced Egyptian economy. The last point, the fifth point, what are the lessons learned from the past for future. Now we are starting about the first item, first point in our chapter. Why did Egypt need an economic reform program? The Egyptian economy suffered from long-term economic problems that couldn't be faced with temporary solution due to the government was dominating the economic system. There were distortion in the prices and incentives. There was a deficit in the balance of the payment due to, the over, to, due to an overvalued exchange rate. The economy just relied on just five sources of foreign currency inflows, a complex multiple exchange rate system for different market and purposes, a longer term physical budget deficit due to the rising government expenditure, and the last was economic activity was dominated by inefficient public sector companies. The second point is the objectives of in 1991, the Egyptian government concluded loan agreements with the IMF and the World Bank to finance a comprehensive economic reform program called AirSAP. That program was with three objectives. First objective was economic stabilization to restore economic balance and reduce inflation. Second objective was structural adjustment and the third one was social protection. Third point, talk about the six components of ERSAP. There were six main components of ERSAP. The first was about the macroeconomic reforms, second domestic price liberalization reform, third external trade liberalization, fourth one public enterprise and privatization reform the fifth about the private sector reforms the sixth one was the social protection program we are talking about them in details the first point about the macroeconomic reforms and the aim was to stabilize the economy from the severe deficits in the budget and the balance of trade by contractionary physical policy through reducing the government's investment expenditure and reducing subsidies and introducing sales tax. Also through tight monetary policy through re reducing and reduction of the growth of the money supply and reducing liquidity growth. Reforms in the banking sector. The reforms in the banking sector were aimed at interest rates where interest rates were liberalized and the banks were allowed to set their own lending and deposit rates. Full private and foreign ownership of banks was allowed. The second point of the ERSAP was the demosting price liberalization reforms. Several measures were taken to liberalize the prices in order to remove distortions in incentives, such as the agricultural land law was issued to raise the land rent, price control were removed in the industrial sector, petroleum and electricity price were increased, and Egyptian national railways tariffs were raised. The third item about the external trade liberalization. The reforms undertaken in the external trade sector, such as unification of foreign exchange rates, cancellation of restriction on export, and reduction of import tariffs. The fourth point is about the public enterprise reform, which is called privatization. 
The privatization of public sector companies was important because these companies were inefficient, which meaning it was making losses, great of losses, and was considered as a burden on the public budget and had an and had unfair competition with the private sector. So, the num law number 203 issued was issued in 1991 to convert some of the public establishment and institution into holding companies, which resulted to separating them from the government budget and increase their managerial autonomy. Ministry of Public Enterprises was established to supervise the restructuring and privatization process. Different privatization methods were employed, including direct sale of companies to strategic investors and initial public offering in the stock market, the stock exchange. Some companies were liquidated and sold as assets. Fourth point about private sector reform. Also, there are different reforms taken by the government to increase the private sector involvement in the economic activity, in the Egyptian economic activity. Among these reforms, the government removed investment and the production licensing requirement for the most goods. Also, the government cancelled restriction on the quantities produced and liberalized the prices for cement and fertilizers. The sixth component of the AirSAP program is the Social Protection Program. That program was established to set up a social protection mechanism that would minimize the negative effects of the stabilization program and the consequences of the privatization process. So the Social Fund for Development was established to finance the establishment of small enterprises through microcredit loans and also to maintenance help in the maintenance of the canals and providing training programs. So now we finish the third point in our chapter which was about the components of the AirSAP program. Now we are moving to the fourth point in our chapter which is about to what extent the AirSAP program was successful. It was successful or no. As I was referring in, before in our lecture, for evaluating each program, you have to consider both effects of that program or policy. You have to refer to the positive effects and the negative effects. According to the AirSAP, there were some positive effects and impacts and other negative impacts. According to the positive effects of the AirSAP, we have the budget deficit was reduced and it decreased from 17% to just 1.2%. The inflation rate decreased from 20% in 1991 to an average of 60% annually. Third point, third point, the balance of payment deficit is decreased also, it decreased and, the, and changed into surplus. The fourth point, the national reserves of foreign currency also increased by five more five times. The government subsidies were decreased and, and reduced. Also, there are successful reform and restructuring the financial market and unification of the foreign exchange market. Also, the Egyptian privatization program was ranked by the IMF as the fourth in the world, where the sale of the sale of public sector enterprises generated revenue for the government reduced the public expenditure on these companies and so increased the foreign investment inflows. The last point among the positive effects and impact of the IRSAP program is that the Egyptian government was able to cancel the second part of the IMF loan agreement. Now we are moving to the now we are moving to the next to the negative aspect of the AirSAP. Among the negative impact of the AirSAP, we have that the privatization program was not accompanied with the law that protects the perfect competition and protect competition. Privatization didn't lead to a significant change in the rate of private sector investment to compensate for the large decline in public investment. Third point, that process of privatization started with profitable companies and then the government tried to sell the remaining loss-making enterprises. 
Now we are moving to the last point in our chapter which about the lesson learned from the past. What are the lessons we can learn from the Egyptian experience in applying the IRSA program? First, policies to control prices against the forces of supply and demand have often resulted in opposite results. So reducing the price of a good in short, in the short run, supply creates black markets and also it's raising the prices and increasing the shortage of that good. Experience from Egypt have had shown that the public sector is usually not efficient, inefficient in production. The government should enable the private sector to assume an active role in the economy. Also, over reasons on the external finance, such as the foreign aid and the borrowing, is unsustainable in the long run, especially when it is used to finance unproductive activity. This is the past have often led Egypt to external debt crisis, rapid inflation, and ultimate economic stagnation when the foreign existence in most traffic. The last point. The last point and the last lesson can be learned from the Egyptian experience during applying IRSAP that the government has an important regulatory role in the economy. The government should set and enforce regulations that protect private private sector and the private rights and guarantee for fair competitions.